pilgrimage. I have perfected, and he is talking on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. I have perfected your religion. And I have completed that for you and chose Islam as the final message for you. So there is nothing on the face of the earth in the affairs of religion, whether it is hidden or it's clear. But the Prophet ﷺ explained it to us in full. That's why one of the companions said, even it was not a bird moving in the sky, but the Prophet ﷺ explained to us what to do and what is the legal ruling related to. Our respected brothers and sisters, there are two basic elements of our life. Whether our actions are related to acts of worship, or they may be related to our transactions, our daily transactions. If we are talking about the acts of worship, the basic rule is that we need to stop. We cannot act upon anything, any right in Islam until there is a proof which is mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why we cannot actually introduce something out of our own selves and say this is good, it will draw us closer to Allah and say this is an act of worship. No, we need to receive it through an authentic proof, tracing it back to the Prophet And That's why the scholar said there are five major conditions in an act of worship that must be fulfilled. Number one, the act of worship must be implemented or done according to the reason it was created for. By the reason, there is a legal reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his book, or the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. So some of the people they may say, we will commemorate the birth date of the Prophet ﷺ because it draws us closer to him and love him. But the Messenger ﷺ did not do that. The Prophet himself didn't have that reason of doing that. Also, there must be a conformity between the type of act of worship and how the Prophet ﷺ made it. That's why we cannot, for example, sacrifice a chicken to be a sacrificial animal in replacing a sacrificial animal in Udhiyah, for example, because the Quran and the Prophet ﷺ specified eight categories of the animals that must be sacrificed in that occasion. And they are mentioned in the Quran. Bahimatul An'am, they are the cattle which are mentioned in the Quran, including the camel, the cows, the sheep, and the goat. Also, an act of worship must be in conformity with the amount and the manner and also the timing. This is the basic ruling regarding the acts of worship. With regard to the transactions, the scholars said that the basic rule is legality until there is a proof to provide that it is unlawful or it is not permitted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will have a short break and then we will continue our discussion of this hadith. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let the confusion, the chaos and the pain A man emerged and Muhammad was his name Islam was his only goal. As wa wa barakatuh. We have some of our guests, Brother Mustafa and Brother Ibrahim, Jazakumullah khairan, for attending with us, mm -hmm. raising some of the questions. Before talking about the questions, I need to clarify the meaning of the hadith again. 
we have two major versions of this hadith. The first one, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever introduces something new in our religion, he will have it rejected. Somebody say, I can actually introduce something, but, or even I receive it from somebody else, but I cannot act upon that. So that's why the other version complements that by saying, مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا Whoever acts upon something which is not in accordance with our religion, he will have it rejected. The basic question that we need to answer now, what is the meaning of bid'ah? What is the meaning of the word innovation? We need to, to clarify two major points. The first point, bid'ah in terms of acts of worship and bid'ah in terms of transactions. In terms of the acts of worship, it is anything which is intended to draw the person closer to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, hmm. but not in conformity with the basic rules of Islam and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. In terms of transactions, the basic rule is that everything is permissible unless there is a text which prohibits that. Mm -hmm. So... It must be, the transaction must be within the boundaries of the sharia, the conditions and the requirements. That's why any invalid condition which is included in a contract of marriage, in a contract of sale, this is invalid and this is regarded actually a bid'ah or an innovation in that case. This is uh, the first clarification of the word bid'ah and that's why we need to put it in our mind. So if the brothers have any questions about the hadith, that may enrich, inshallah, our discussions for that. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, f first of all, uh, of course, a, f a few minutes ago, you uh, gave a definition uh, of the bid'ah, but uh, we would like to give a definition for the bid'ah linguistically. What's meant by bid'ah linguistically? Yes, you, you are right, subhanAllah, because some people, it makes a confusion. Some of the people, they say, this is a good innovation, this is a good bid'ah. Mm -hmm. And this is an evil bid'ah. Yeah. That's why it comes to our mind, especially there is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which he says, مَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً حَسَنَةً mm -hmm. Whoever introduces something good in uh, Islam, uh, or according, literally, مَنْ سَنَّ who makes a practice which is new in Islam and it's good, and the people follow him, yeah. uh, he will be praised for mm -hmm. that. So th that's why the scholars defined, there are two definitions for the word bid'ah. Number one, the, the literal meaning, the superficial meaning of the word, the general meaning, what we, we say, that it is anything which is new. It's called a bid'ah. Like, for example, the clothes that you have. They are bid'ah because something new. The microphone, yeah. the, the camera, the TV, all of these are bid'ah because mm -hmm. they are something new. But when we are talking in the religions, in the, in the affairs of religion and Islam, we are talking about things which are related to the mm -hmm. acts of worship. Mm -hmm. That's why one of the scholars defined that very clearly and said if there is something which was available at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and he did not take it or he did not act upon it, then it becomes, and the people following his generation ﷺ, they acted upon that, it becomes a bid'ah. Yeah. So for example,